You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcast on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button on our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for July 3rd, 2020. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the Cornfield Resistance, where another uneventful infrastructure week draws to a close, it's The Professional Left with Drip Glass and Blue Gal. This is take doing? take three. We're, take three. We're having, we're having some technical difficulties, Fourth of July and all that. I Zencaster guess. Zencaster is drunk, honey. But you know what? <laughs> it doesn't matter because we're the only podcast out here this weekend. So we we have a hundred percent. This is like Krusty the Clown commandeering the only radio station left in town during a national <laughs> emergency. We're the only game in town. Everybody else is on vacation, kids. You got no choice. Come to, send your friends over here. Just. As you line your hammock, looking between your toes, wondering what's going on in the world, just remember your pals, the professional left, are always here for you every Friday, rain or shine. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, and we want to wish a uh, happy birthday, middle child. She had her 18th birthday yesterday. Yay. Uh, she was uh, sullen, as sullen as, you know, an 18-year-old will be about these things uh, during the coronavirus pandemic, which keeps her from having a big blowout party. This is your party, mom, not mine. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, my birthday's in two weeks. So, yeah, I, that's the way I got her to sit down and have a party. I said, well, this is going to be my party, too. We'll combine them. Yes. Because uh, she wanted to be, I don't want anything, mom. I don't want to have a party. I don't well, want, yeah. And well, no. and she's not depressed. She's no. just yeah, she's very self denying all the time. Well, and she wants the one thing she wants. I, I was on a Zoom call with my brother. And sister, uh, Saturday, we're going to do it every two weeks. And one thing my brother, by the way, good news, good news. Complete aside, my brother works at a senior care facility mm -hmm. in Colorado. And they just got tested a few days ago. 197 people tested, zero positives. Wonderful. So that's a, that's terrific news. Uh, but he asked, is there anything that a certain 18-year-old uh, would like for her birthday? And I said, just to be as far away from us as possible. Yeah, she'd so, like to be on her own, you know living in a vegan hut somewhere, vegan spa, whatever. A vegan garret in New York would be perfect. Yeah, yeah. vegan, right? <laughs> the left bank of the Seine or yeah. Greenwich Village, well, right? It's, it's time for adventures. It's time to have yeah. adventures. And that's yeah. entirely appropriate. And it's and, and she's been sat on because yeah. of this virus and not being able to do that. So, uh, but we did, uh, sneakily, I got in touch with one of her girlfriends and- mm -hmm. Three or four of them were over yes, last night on the sidewalk with masks on. Mm -hmm. She came out with a mask and they gave her a card and she talked for them for 30 minutes. And I uh, apparently she gave you an I hate you. Yes, on the way out the door, <laughs> I, I, I was going out to pick up um, dinner and uh, I waved them back. I waved them across the way and then baited her outside because I'm an old man and need her help picking up heavy things. <laughs> and fine. And she looked at me and looked at them, looked at me and said, I hate you. And then walked out and had a wonderful time. So yeah, laughing and giggling with her girlfriend. So yeah. 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 So uh and and I think she had a good birthday. So I think she did too. I think she yeah. did too. And my yeah, my birthday's in two weeks. I am not eighteen years old. No. Uh you know, I'm eighteen times four almost. And you were forced and, to share your birthday with um your mother. With my mom. Yeah. yeah. My mom passed away just a few days before Donald Trump was elected president. And yeah. I'm very glad that if, if she had to go, that was one. It would have killed her. It would have killed her to yeah. watch all the, of this happen. So, But as an artist, she I, I like to think she had more to contribute to the world. She would have been doing yeah. some, some yeah, good well, art. Yeah, well, she did some good art. And, and I'm the only thing that makes me sad these days is she would have done a portrait of George Floyd. She she would have loved to have done that. And uh, at any rate, uh, I am always glad to remember her on our birthday. And it's not a sad day. I'd always just remember her. And I, I do thank, thank whatever powers that be are out there that uh, she didn't have to suffer through the um, 
what we've Trump president, the Trump yeah. presidency yeah, this, period. The last you know, three just years of put it simple, yeah, this clusterfuckery. I mean, yeah. just just unbelievable. It is, um, you know, you and I were talking during the first take of this podcast. We've um, had a, a few technical difficulties here today, <laughs> um, folks. <laughs> that you know, my mom passed away uh, last Thanksgiving, just this last mm-hmm. Thanksgiving, and that um, uh, we'd like to thank our, our mothers in the great beyond, goofing and with each other and doing art and knitting and looking down and going tisking tisk tisk. But it is really nice um, to sort of to take a step back every now and then and look at the the multi generational progression of a family and see how certain aspects of your family um, continue and grow and get amplified and get nourished just the way that um, you and, and middle child sit around the table talking about the death of the patriarchy is, <laughs> is again, not great, even behind your back. No, it's great news for everyone. <laughs> bad news for me, but that's okay. Those are the breaks I, you know, middle, middle-aged white guys have had it good for a, long time so yeah um you know did you know did you hear her last night she um bosco our new cat newest mm-hmm. cat yes was sitting on the dining room table which our cats are allowed to do mm-hmm. and uh middle child was explaining to the cat that uh we live in a world where we produce two and a half times the amount of food we need and children still go hungry and that's the fault of capitalism mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and i'm laughing because Bosco seemed to take it all in. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and I, I'm I'm thinking that my mother and my grandmother on my mother's side would love that. Would yes. love that. They would think that is awesome. I my want, mother too. I yeah. want to believe I had something to do with that, this conversation happening. This is right. a fulfillment of who I am and uh, my deepest beliefs. And there's another side of my family where that would be a horrifying and an outcast. And that side yeah. and those attitudes are dying off. Right. At, as right. A, and at, it and it is okay. I mean, this is a good segue because it mm-hmm. is okay to talk about your ancestors that way. Yes, it is. Uh, we've had a really good lesson in that this week. I'm sorry to jump so far no, ahead no, into our notes, but great segue. Yeah. Uh, being being so impressed with the poet Caroline Randall Williams, who's been everywhere this week, uh, and and what a refreshing change from John Bolton. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Caroline Randall Williams wrote a piece for the New York Times about how her body is a Confederate monument. She is a mixed race black and she has mm-hmm. Confederate soldiers uh, in her family, in her yes. family tree, uh, who raped black women. And uh, that is part of her heritage. And she said on uh, a, another podcast. Well, she turned the whole my heritage argument on its head. Uh-huh. And she didn't she is modeling how white southerners can denounce their heritage and their ancestors yeah. and still be who they are. Uh, she said that her woke friends when she was in college were like, "Well, going forward, just know I love black people." And yeah. that was the most she could expect. Uh-huh. Uh, but that didn't mean that they denounced their great grandfathers. And she said, I denounce my great great grandfather. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let me show you how you do it. <laughs> and so she's been on the news because of this seminal piece that she wrote, and also because they are taking down monuments. Yes. And these monuments uh, were, as you said last week, I think, were either put up in the 1920s or were put up in the 1964, 65. In the 50s and 60s, yeah. Civil rights yeah. movement. Yeah, these were all to, fuck you to the civil rights movement. Right. Fuck you to the civil rights movement. Fuck you to the end of lynching. Right. You know, uh, but there is deep change c- coming. I mean, we're taking Woodrow Wilson off of Princeton. That yeah. is remarkable. They t- announced today there's not going to be Washington Redskins anymore. We thought mm-hmm. that was never going to happen. But- Corporate America said, well, yeah, you know, I got to do that. Yeah. And so Caroline Randall Williams pointed out the critical role that white women in the Daughters of the Confederacy and the KKK yes. have in enforcing Jim Crow and segregation. Mm-hmm. And it has to do with sexuality. It has to do with uh, the fear of being raped by a black man uh-huh. and not wanting their white men to have sex, which means rape, but they won't say that. Right. They don't want their men raping a black woman. They don't want her, him having pleasure from a black woman. Right. And so we have Confederate monuments put up by the daughters of the Confederacy. Yeah. We have 
We have race laws. We have miscegenation laws. I'll tell you something, Driftglass. I think it is it is great and essential that we take down these monuments. I think it's essential that we publicize acts of racism and violence against black people. Uh-huh. And I don't know if you saw it, the, the woman in New Jersey who had a fit because some black attorneys on her street were building a patio on their own property. Well, that could just be homeowner association bullshit, but okay. Yeah, and she was yeah. calling the police and do you have a permit and uh, just on and on. Yeah. And, and the striking thing was her white neighbors came out and called her out on it mm-hmm. and said, no, we're going to tell the police you lied. Yeah. You know, no one attacked you. And, and yeah, she's doing the, the HOA thing, but, but in a racist way, in a completely racist way. And her mm-hmm. white neighbors dragged her for it. And they dragged her for it because of what's happened in the past six weeks. Mm-hmm. The, there has been, at long last, I think, a raising of consciousness of a lot of this bullshit. If you want to read uh, out there, you good people want to read a great piece of fiction on this subject from a long time ago. Um, I can highly recommend Octavia Butler's Kindred, Mm -hmm. which Mm -hmm. is a time travel story, a science fiction story, but it's a story about a black woman who is flung back in time into her own ancestry Mm. and has to come to terms with the fact that her family line was created out of rape during Mm -hmm. plantation Mm -hmm. times. And Mm -hmm. Octavia Butler used to just wade into the stuff up to her. She was fearless, Mm -hmm. absolutely fearless Mm -hmm. talking about this is, this is history. This is our history. This is in our blood. And sometimes she made aliens, the um, bad guys, because that was easier. And sometimes they were just people living in this country, but there's a a wealth of literature that nobody sees. uh, And that had to be masked as science fiction for a while that talks Mm -hmm. about how you have to confront your past. And secondly, as symbols are important and names of things are important and flags are important, um, money talks. And um, it is is still the case where it took uh, popular information, an organization called Popular Information Reporting on Comcast's relationship uh, with notorious Republican hobgoblin Matt Schlapp. Yeah, yeah. Uh, dragging their that contract out into the light before Comcast said, "Ooh, wait, wait, wait. You know what we should do? We should rethink this whole contract with Matt Schlapp, who's been attacking and denigrating Black Lives Matter." They were never going to do that, ever going to do that until that came out in public. Corporations have to be shamed. Right. Sunlight and money and corporations have to be shamed. And and how shocking it is. I mean, it's not shocking, but at the same time, I was shocked to think that Matt Schlapp had a $400,000 contract with Comcast. Yeah. It's, and it's because he, let's, let's remember Matt Schlapp, uh, Brooks Brothers rioter, yep. uh, young uh, Bush regime scumbag. campaigner, yeah. scumbag, mm-hmm. but he was a Brooks Brothers rioter in Florida, stopping the recount of black votes mm-hmm. in Florida so that George W. Bush could steal the 2000 election. Mm-hmm. And, he was rewarded. He sure. is now head of CPAC, and his wife is in the White House, mm-hmm. and he has a job for life. But he then trades that position at CPAC, Conservative Political Action Conference, into I can call any Republican congressman on the phone and he'll return my calls, mm-hmm. into lobbying. And he... He had a four hundred thousand dollar contract and a two hundred thousand dollar contract mm-hmm. and a one hundred thousand. You know, he's making a million dollars a year lobbying mm-hmm. Republican congressmen who will return his calls because of his connection to CPAC. Yep, yep. And unless and, until <laughs> and, and and lobbying despicable people on the behalf of right. despicable causes. Right. And let's remember, right. Comcast owns. MSNBC. Yeah. Comcast yeah. are the employers of Rachel Maddow and Joe Scarborough and uh, Lawrence O'Donnell and, and Chris Hayes. And right down the list, the, the bottom of their paycheck says Comcast. So, But, but it, they never want to see cable television turned into a utility. No. And they will lobby forever to make sure that that doesn't happen. So when you, when you, when you wonder why 
certain topics are absolutely verboten on television. Why mm-hmm. Bill Crystal can be can be dragged for for years for being a blood drunk right wing sociopath who should never be allowed anywhere near a microphone on MSNBC, and then suddenly. Nobody talks about Bill Crystal anymore because now he's a Comcast employee and he's a fellow employee of that corporation. That's what that's what influences your news. That's why you see certain things. That's why you don't see other things because at the end of the day, it's a business and businesses respond to public embarrassment. And that's really all they'll respond to. And unless they're run by people who are proudly um, racist, like Hobby Lobby, in which case they don't care that you think that they're a bunch of racists, they're a bunch of right wing nuts. They are, and that's their that's their demographic, and those are the people they appeal to, and that's that's their thing. But people who want to live in both worlds, who want to pretend to be enlightened and with the program, and you know we're, we have a diversity program, and HR will would never tolerate such a thing. And then you pop the hood, and you find out that they have these financial connections to these scumbags who they know mm-hmm. are who they hired because they are scumbags. Only then. Will you pry them into doing the right thing and never think otherwise? Because that's the only way progress is made. So my the last thing I want to say about this uh, Confederate monument situation is that I'm re- also really glad to see that the racists and people pulling guns out on, on black protesters and so forth are having some real consequences like yes. losing their jobs. Yes. Losing business. Yes. But I worry that it's for naught if the people of Kentucky don't fire Mitch McConnell from yeah. his job. Yeah. And then Rand Paul. Yeah. And Jesus Christ. Kentucky. <laughs> Absolutely. Jesus Christ, Kentucky. Come on, do better. Just do do a little bit better. We want to thank our listeners for all the advice you gave us about video editing software. Driftglass is going through those emails now and uh, coming up with a list and trying different things. Yes. And a listener sent us an old used MacBook to play mm-hmm. with. Yes, and no, uh, you've been playing, playing with that. With I, I, he, co- he got it hooked up to the internet, which is better than his laptop is behaving today. <laughs> That's right. My laptop is not being uh, nice. But yes. So I think it's jealous of the MacBook is the is. problem. Drift glass. It's smaller um, and cuter and you know. <laughs> lighter. <laughs> thank you everybody. Wanted to thank you for that. Drift class you wrote about the Lincoln Project and you actually posted your book cover. I did. Uh, my imaginary did book you, cover. Your imaginary book cover yeah. with how how the Republican uh never Trumpers saved America. <laughs> yeah. From from both of us. How if they the, the my imaginary book cover is that they're the saviors of the republic, and uh-huh. they and according to the history that is about to be written, unless we do something about it, they will go down as the people who saved the republic from the crazy right and the loony left, and the loony left being you and me. Um, uh, we Both are sides, drip glass. We are being crowded out of the modern history of the United States. I don't mean you and me personally. We've been out of the. Uh, out of this that circle of trust for years now. So, uh, but just generally, um, liberals and the left and progressives and th- that whole group of people who keep the country more or less moving forward, or at least we try to, are uh, for some reason uh, has decided collectively at the top, top, top of the food chain to outsource um, their outrage and their advertising and their spotlight to a bunch of ex Republicans. Um, and I, I went through this before, as did you at the end of the Bush administration, we saw, you know, here's a whole bunch of Republicans who need to have the righteous judgment of history come down on their heads. And for reasons that involve corporations and money and media and, and holy shit, we can't be holding an entire political party accountable for the fact that they're monsters. You let them off the hook. They regroup six months later, come back as the tea party. And now they've elected Donald Trump. Well, and worse than – I'm not going to say worse than. Mm-hmm. The Tea Party was pretty bad, and the Tea Party was for the base. But as bad as that is, the No mm-hmm. Labels group came out at the same time. They did. Absolutely they did. And the, and they, they work hand in glove, really, because one yeah. group says yep. we're, we weren't even there. We had mm-hmm. nothing to do with anything, and that's for saving the Republican base. The other group says both sides are terrible. Both sides are awful. We need a third way, and that is to let the elite off the hook. To mm-hmm. let David Brooks mm-hmm. and and David Frum and Michael Gerson off the hook, so they can pretend that no, 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 we were in, we're we're in the elite centrist consensus of, of this country, and the problem is the extremes on both sides, and that dynamic is as I am saying this, 
replicating itself again in public again. And immediately. Im- it, so immediately that it's in David Brooks's column this morning. Yes. David Brooks's column this morning was all about, sure, the Republican problem, and literally saying, sure, the Repu- this, is a, this is a Republican problem, but really, it's a collective failure on all of our parts. It's America's problem. And I can see it coming. And I don't know mm-hmm. what to do other than wave my arms and say, if you keep giving, oh, let me put it this way. Donald Trump is a blighted tree. <laughs> um, the Republican Party is a blighted tree. And the coronavirus is the stroke of lightning that has split it in half. And the Lincoln Project and the Never Trumpers are a family of squirrels <laughs> living nearby who will now take credit for the collapse of the Trump administration. And they will, and 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 so what's the plan? Why are they doing this? Well, they would like to take over the Republican Party, and get back to the good old days of Tom Cotton and Dick Cheney, um, and and just they want all of the horrific things Trump does without the quiet part being said out loud. And so, I look forward to the day. I don't look forward to it, but I predict the day. First thing they're going to need is a lot of people. They're going to need millions and millions of people, and they're never going to get a million, ten million people from the Democratic Party to join their new Republican Party. That's not going to happen. And you're never going to get tens of millions of idiots in the middle who don't vote anyway and are not interested in politics at all to join your party. They're going to have to reclaim the Republican base if they want to have any power at all. And that's all they want. So how are you going to do that? Well, you're going to have to put yourself in a position where you get to be the absolver in chief. You get to be in charge of forgiving people. And helping them pretend that it never happened. And helping Republican politicians swear that they never meant to do any harm. But they were just trying to do the best they could for the constituencies during this very difficult time. And that's what they're positioning themselves to do. They're positioning themselves to be the kingmakers of the Republican Party. And once that happens, you're going to see Bill Kristol and Rick Wilson and Charlie Sykes and Joe Scarborough on television, and you're never going to see another liberal on TV again, because they will have claimed credit for something for which they have, they are entirely responsible for it being created and minimally, minimally helpful in getting rid of. I'm I'm sorry. I I want to interrupt you just a minute and ask you if you think women are going to let them do that. If you think black women are going to let them do that. I think that the Republican Party doesn't give a shit what black women thinks. That's true. And I think that it if if you want your revolution to succeed, you, and I'm not talking to any partic- any group in particular. I'm talking about modern the modern real politic of how things work. History is decided by where you point the camera. And and once Donald Trump is gone, they will not point the camera at liberals anymore. Who is they? The, because the there's Comcast. cameras being pointed all over the place oh, sure. that no, have no, no, nothing no. to do with what MSNBC I, does. I completely I'm being, agree. I'm not being devil's advocate. I'm actually arguing. No, with no, no. You. <laughs> I, 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 I completely agree. There are plenty of cameras right now that are pointing at George Floyd, right, and travesties like that, and those things are being fed into because they're just an overwhelming number of of um, acts of violence and and horrifying excesses by police and by shitty white people that are being fed into the media pipeline. And that's fine. That's a good thing. At this moment, everyone wants to get rid of Donald Trump, but for very different reasons. I want to see him and his whole regime gone because Republicans are despicable people who are ruining my country. Rick Wilson wants him gone because he's fucking up his takeover of the Republican Party. I think what's going to happen after that is what happened during the Iraq war protests the mainstream press just won't cover it. They'll mm-hmm. just turn their backs. They'll pretend it's not happening. There were millions and millions and millions of people in the streets during the Iraq war protesting it, and the mainstream press turned their back and wouldn't talk about it. There were dozens and dozens of people in Ramada in parking lots wearing stupid hats pretending to be tea partiers, and the media covered the shit out of that mm-hmm. because the story cannot be that one of our political parties is monstrously evil and needs to be burned to the fucking ground. That cannot yeah. be permitted and, and to be the New York story. Times decided this week that they had to talk about the, what, five and a half, six percent 
of Trump voters who will never vote for Trump again. Right. Because, you know, Hillary, I just had no a choice. Deep dive. It was a deep dive. They went back to the same <laughs> old fucking diners and they yeah, talked to the yeah. same old fucking racist who now, well, White Hillary people. was terrible. You know, she was White awful. Men. She I was couldn't vote for Hillary. Of course right. not. Yes. That, what changed your mind? Well, 120,000 people died. Well, and that person is going to become an independent and vote third party. Or they're going to vote for Joe Biden to get that off their conscience. They're going to go right back to being a Republican. The right. problem is the right. fucking Republican Party. And you cannot say to people whose primary concern is selling dick pills and reverse mortgages, you can't have them telling their audience that a third of your neighbors are monsters. And you have to take a side. You have to stand up for your country. You have to stand up against your neighbors to save your country. Because a third of this country does not want to hear that. They, they so deeply believe in the myth of American unity and we're all in this together and, and et cetera, et cetera, that the idea that one political party is actually evil and actually working to wreck their country is unthinkable to them. And won't mm -hmm. they will not listen to anyone who tells them that. So they will flee to whatever television station or newspaper tells them that that scary thing is not true. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. and you certainly don't want to piss off Republicans because they buy reverse mortgages and dick pills too. So you can't just point a camera at every Republican and say, you're the fucking problem, leave my planet. And so you'll end up with this same formula that existed in 2016 and back in 2010, which is, you know, really, first of all, the voters certainly weren't to blame for this. They didn't know any better. And most Republican politicians are just good folks who went along with this and suddenly found themselves in a tough situation, blah, 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 blah. The real problem was Donald Trump and six people. And those yeah. six people are gone now. So we can go back to the good old days when we were all getting along, we were all friends, and we're just going to pretend the Obama administration never happened, and on, on, on. And that is what I see congealing in front of me, my very eyes right now. Well, and I, I, I wish I could give you hope by asking you to take the take a little bit of the blinders off and not just see Twitter and cable news as I, the world. Because I, I think there's stuff going on that we don't see, necessarily see happening that's really happening and really changing this country. I, I would love that to be true. I would yeah. love that to be true. And if I'm wrong, boy, will I be happy to be wrong. I'll be thrilled yeah. to be wrong. David Brooks rolls out the otter defense. Thanks to N. Todd, by the way. Uh, for giving me a much better title and and analogy to use for this uh, for this little post, as you know, I am America's leading uh, David Brooksologist, and today, as anyone could have predicted, uh, David Brooks looked at the awfulness of Donald Trump and said, "Sure, this was a Republican failure, but it was also a collective failure." I spared my readers the necessity of reading another eight hundred words of of wingnut welfare. Schulzberger family funded bullshit by the America's most consistently wrong conservative. Uh, but it did boil out in one sentence that I did share, which was, uh, we'll still have cultural elite that knows little about the people in red America and daily sends the message that they are illegitimate. David Brooks has gone back to the both sides. Do it well. That's where he lives. That's where all of his colleagues live. They don't know how to exist in a world where one side is just fucking wrong. Because then they'd have to go out and look for honest work. And that's why the media set up the way it is. If you'll notice, all the people that I get pissed about, all of whom have permanent gigs on cable news, um, the hosts of those programs are very kind in the way that they make sure that their friends are never subjected to anyone asking them any embarrassing questions. It's, it is part of the mainstream media's job to make sure that David Brooks never sits across the table from anyone who ever asks him anything difficult. He sits across from a wattled Mark Shields, who will talk about his very good friend, David Brooks, and my dear friend, David Brooks. You know, we kind of disagree with that, but David's a decent guy. David Brooks will never be put in a cage match with anyone who can ask him any questions. And that's, the, that's why the media exists, to make sure people like David Brooks are given Jobs for life are, are, are permitted, are encouraged, are contracted to write shitty opinions about how both sides are to blame forever and ever and ever. He's been doing it for 20 fucking years. And to make sure that no one comes within a thousand miles of asking him a hard question about anything. And that's not news. That is propaganda. And every time you see someone on television who you know is full of shit 
and there's no one within a thousand miles asking them any questions that will make them look stupid, you are watching propaganda. And the question you should be asking yourself is why is that lying sack of shit allowed to do this? Whose interest is it serving? And so David Brooks went back to being David Brooks this week to no one's surprise. You found a really interesting Dick Cheney quote this week. I did. Dick Cheney has gotten hero status for wearing a mask on Twitter. Right. And I think it's important to remember, not only has Dick Cheney gotten hero status for, for you know, talking, for wearing a mask on Twitter, and his bloodthirsty daughter yeah. has gotten hero status for, you know, talking about how we shouldn't be spreading disease from coast to coast, but that Dick Cheney existed in the before time. Mm-hmm. All of your never Trump friends, all of your Lincoln Project friends, all want to go back to the good old days when, when people were civilized and we just argued about policy and this crazy shit that we have trashing people and right wing people being nuts and just calling shit names and questioning each other's patriotism. That certainly didn't happen back in the good old days, except it did. And the reason you don't remember it is because nobody talks about it. And here's this lovely article from the New York Times from September 8th, 2004, titled Cheney warns of terror risk if, Ch if Kerry wins. Remember, remember Kerry? He was going to be president for a while there. Here's the quote. It's absolutely essential that eight weeks from today on November 2nd, we make the right choice, Mr. Cheney told a crowd of 350 people in Des Moines, because if we make the wrong choice, then the danger is that we'll get hit again and, will, and we'll be hit in a way that will be devastating from the standpoint of the United States. So if you elect John Kerry, we're going to be attacked by terrorists. So don't do your that. Kids will, your kids will probably die in a terrorist attack. Mm -hmm. That is how Dick Cheney ran for president or vice president or regent, where the fuck he was, in 2004. Mm -hmm. In the good old days, in the good times, back when Republicans were just normal folks and everything was fine, before Donald Trump came along and turned them into a bunch of lying backstabbing, bomb-throwing racists, except they've always been a party of lying, backstabbing, bomb-throwing racists. And because that is true, the question you should be asking yourself is, why the hell are so many people so deeply invested in pretending the history began in 2006? What's in it for them? It's either power or money. Because it isn't the good of the country, because these people don't give a shit about your country. And it isn't the good of, of it isn't the health of the nation, the physical health of the nation, because they don't give a shit about that either. So what is it? Why are people so desperate to pretend that history began in 2016? And before that, everything was fine. Because of Dick Cheney. You have to remember Dick Cheney if you do that. And then we'll never elect another Republican again as long as we live. And they have to remember Karl Rove. And they have yeah. to remember Tom DeLay. And they have to remember Trent Lott. And they have to remember George Bush. And oh, shit, was Bill Crystal? Oh, God, Bill Crystal was in the middle of all this. Why the fuck is Bill Crystal still on television? Well... Because Bill Crystal has friends. Bill Crystal you don't have picked, handpicked Sarah Palin to be yeah. the running Sarah mate. Palin, please don't make me remember Sarah Palin. Please don't. Who? No, wasn't that Steve Schmidt? Holy shit, what's Steve Schmidt doing now? Oh, that's yeah. right. He's running the fucking Lincoln Project. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is maddening to those of us who have memories to watch people just degauss their brain. Because it's terrifying to think that these people are never going away. Yeah. That they, they have this special magic wired inside connection that means they were they're never going to be held accountable and they're never going to go away until the day they keel over dead they just they have friends in high places that's what they have and that they social do. network is what works for them yes. um i do feel sad that dozens of secret service officers and agents who were told to self-quarantine after trump's tulsa rally i feel bad for them that's they I were there too. because of their job Yes. Um, I don't feel bad for Herman Cain testing positive for the no. coronavirus. I just don't. I hope he doesn't die. I don't wish death on anybody because I don't want that barb to exist in my heart. And that's the way I am. I I hear mm -hmm. my, I have colleagues, I have Twitter friends and so forth who, you know, want Trump to get the coronavirus and die. They want so-and-so to die. I don't, I on purpose don't do that because um, no. I just don't want to, I don't want to carry that around with me. No, um, I, want the, I want the I want the system to work. I right. want the bad people to be driven out of office by the electoral process yeah. and by yeah. the courts yeah. and so forth. That's what I want. But um, <laughs> but Herman Cain uh, was there to cheerlead with the non-existent Blacks for Trump contingent of the Republican Party. Uh, he did not wear a mask. He hung around inches from other people in an indoor stadium, and he got sick. 
and, and he's now in he's the in hospital. hospital. Yeah, and he's in the serious, hospital. Yeah, with serious symptoms. And you know, it, I don't know how many times you need to punch people in the face before they realize that, that they need to take this seriously. I really don't. Yeah, yeah. Um, because right now, the rest of the world is, for the most part, there's a couple of exceptions. For the most part bring down their pandemic numbers pretty dramatically. In the United States, we are running in exactly the opposite direction. And it's because of a lack of leadership. It absolutely yeah. can be tied to that. Uh, listener Eric wrote us, and <laughs> you have to laugh because you'll cry if you yeah. don't. Yeah. Uh, Europe would prefer not to have Americans enter. We're bringing disease. We're bringing crime. We're rapists. And some, we assume, are good people. Yeah. 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 And Donald Trump has made us into a shithole country. Shithole country. That no, that no other country wants to have anywhere near their borders. Yep. That is Donald Trump and the Republican Party have done that to us. Your 60 million neighbors and friends and local business owners who voted for him and support him and think the run, sun rises and set on Donald Trump did this to us. And they need to pay for it. They need to pay a stiff and brutal price for it. If you let them off the hook, they will fucking well do it again. There has to be a mechanism for making sure individually they are held accountable for not Trump, but all of their shitty, awful, terrible, racist decisions for the last 30 years that led up to Trump. There has to be a way of making them pay for that or else we're screwed. Um, Kaylee McEnany said that Donald Trump isn't reading his daily briefing. He doesn't need to because he does read and consumes intelligence verbally. This president, I will tell you, is the most informed person on earth when it comes to the threats we face. Well, I agree because he looks in the mirror every day and he is the number one threat <laughs> to this country. So, yeah. According to a lot of polls, he is. Yes, he is. Yeah. Uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell warned Democrats on Tuesday not to mess with the filibuster rule if they win control of the chamber in November. It seems yeah. to me like he's reading some writing on some wall. I do give Mitch McConnell credit for being able to count votes. That is not something to be taken lightly. And that is no. not something that you can deny about him. It is a talent no. that he has. And uh, regardless of how I feel about his morality and lack thereof, he's mm -hmm. able to count votes and he's able to see, yeah. uh, read the prevailing winds of politics. Uh, well, like Dick Cheney, he's an intelligent evil person. Right. He's intelligent, chaos, ma evil. Right. He said eliminating the legislative filibuster by reducing the 60 vote threshold for passing bills to a simple majority would be a serious mistake. But that is not what Democrats are proposing. And it's important to remember that. Jeff mm -hmm. Merkley, United States Senator from Oregon, is suggesting mm -hmm. a rule where if you're going to filibuster a bill, you have to filibuster. That means pull out the cots, stand up the microphone, Read and green talk. eggs and ham and talk for mm -hmm. 48 hours. We have a group of very old men, white men in the U.S. Senate for the most part. Mm -hmm. And they decided under Republican rule that they could just lift their little finger and say, I'm filibustering this bill and then go out to dinner with a lobbyist and not have mm -hmm. to stand there because it's mm -hmm. that's hard. hard. Going back hard. to this is a conservative recommendation. Let's go back to filibusters where filibusters actually mean you hold the floor. And then uh -huh. there are instances where, yes, someone's going to filibuster a bill. It's mm -hmm. going to happen, but it's not going but to Bernie, happen 300 times a year. Bernie Sanders filibustered. Yes. We listened to him on the radio. We were very impressed. It was it didn't published as a book. It. <laughs> it was. It was. It was yeah. great. It was a mighty moment. And it was, uh, I felt it was a stirring example of democracy in action. Um, and we were both very proud that he had done that. Yep. Uh, but that was an actual filibuster. And these are lazy, old, white men who don't want to do the work. They don't want to pass Senate. anything. So the way to do that is just object to the consideration and mm -hmm. lift your little finger and, and one person can do it. And mm -hmm. it should require cooperation. It should require at least a few people deciding, yeah, this is important enough to, to carry the floor because it does take some coordination between one or two people to make sure it happens. And uh -huh. uh, you filibuster. And it should be rare. And, and it this should, should be, be a rare, rare yeah. thing. A very Because let's face it, filibusters were brought online to 
stand in the way of civil rights right. legislation. Right. Let's not pretend that it has a glorious history. Mr. Smith goes to Washington is fiction. Right. Right. The, the reason we have a filibuster is because a whole bunch of Southern Dixiecrats did not want to pass civil rights legislation. And they wanted to block it. Strom Thurmond being prominent among them. So let's not pretend this is a this is a noble democratic institution. It is, however, a tradition. So if it's going to be a tradition, let's be conservative about it, just like you said, and do it the traditional way. Barbara Mikulski used to get very excited at the thought of pulling the cots out and having a sleepover. Let's do that again. I want to see people get jazzed about the idea of having to sleep, you know, foot to nose with Mitch McConnell. And let's see how long that lasts. Ooh. Fox and Friends host, it was actually the the Mensa reject, Brian Kilmeade, uh-huh. not reading the presidential daily brief. You know, it's like a mini novel every day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, like it's not his job out, to read. And someone pointed out the PDB warning of uh, uh, bin Laden determined to attack and the America was a page and a half long. Page and a half long. And uh, Preet Brahara on Twitter this morning said, I wonder if. Trump read his presidential daily briefing today. Yeah. You know, I wonder, is he reading he it ever? He didn't. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't. The, the, this whole farce that this guy is is doing anything but jerking off in the bathroom, playing golf and tweeting and rage tweeting and going out and, and rolling in a pig pen with a bunch of other racists is ridiculous. He's a fucking pig. He's an illiterate racist pig. And he's, and he's, and the reason Republicans love him is because they are illiterate racist pigs people too. People like people like themselves. That's why. Yeah, yeah. Um, on that same note, uh, Barbara Streisand tweeted, "Can you imagine how Hi- President Hillary Clinton, a woman with a powerful mind, would have handled this pandemic? But being a mother and a grandmother, she would have instinctively taken care of the public health of the people of the United States." Yeah. And Hillary Clinton replied and said. I don't know about that, Barbara, but I sure as hell would have read the presidential daily briefing. Yeah. Um, the Supreme Court just ensured Mueller's grand jury information will not be released before the election. Darn exciting, isn't yeah. it? Um, Laura Ingram says, now at this point, can we all just admit that Fauci is basically working for the Biden campaign? She also tweeted uh, today that uh, if you elect Biden, your taxes will go up and... Mount Rushmore will come down. And we, said, that's why we call her Ava Brown Nose. Ava Brown Nose. Really? I just, I just said, you know, it's the Laura Ingram My Pillow White Power Hour, uh, which is a Biden presidency is her only hope of staying on the air. Oh, yeah. Because no, then no. she can whine about the tyranny of giving equal protection under the law to brown people for eight well, years. That's, that's why I don't think. I think everyone on the right Mm -hmm. who isn't insane, Mm -hmm. who's just evil, Mm -hmm. um, is looking forward to getting rid of Donald Trump. Oh, yeah. They love being in the minority. Are you kidding me? It's a cash cow. He's he's already packed the court, so that's taken care of. Yeah. Um, Everything can be blamed on Donald Trump and Black Lives Matter. Right. You know, on the loony left as well. Yeah. And then we can get back to the good old days of. Let's, again, everything that we have fucked up and the Democrats are trying to fix, we can just kick back on our hammock, throw bombs, yep. and rake in the dough. And that's all Republicans want to do. They want to mm. screw everything up yep. and loot the place and don't want to actually have to govern. Again, the problem this is with why is, they love Donald Trump. It's because he's doing yeah. exactly that. Yeah. On steroids. Uh, and uh, from Wonka, Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick ain't taking no medical advice from that pinko Fauci. Yeah. It, Has he really taken are. any tours of the hospitals in Houston? Because I've seen video and it's horrifying. It is. It is. It looks well. And the template is, it's what Italy looks like. It's what yeah. New York looked like. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's the same thing over and over again. Um, and if you live, if your party is a fundamentally reality denying cult, then you just can't acknowledge this is true until it comes right up your leg and bites you on the ass. Mm-hmm. Um, Rand Paul, the, the 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 little dramatic tantrum Rand Paul threw slagging Dr. Fauci for not being optimistic enough during a pandemic where 125,000, over 125,000 Americans have already died is amazing. I don't know what to say other than 
the people of Kentucky have got to do a lot better if they're if you want to keep them in the union. You're <laughs> flunking, and we're going to be asking you if to reconsider the whole secession thing unless you start putting at least one senator in in Washington who isn't a complete toxic mess. And and people that object to D.C. statehood need to yeah. recognize the senators from Kentucky. Come yeah. on. Well, and I heard this week, you know, um, three hundred thousand. African-Americans in D.C. don't deserve a senator, but white people deserve two du- two Dakotas. So, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, come on. And come a Kentucky, on. apparently. And a Kentucky, and a Montana, oh. and a Wyoming. Hey, let's give every white guy with a thousand, a hundred thousand acres of land his own state and a couple of senators. That'll keep things balanced. And yeah, just, right. And it is racist. It is. It is racist. racist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The New York Times is reporting that there is a problem for colleges in the fall, reluctant professors. Most universities plan to bring students back to campus, but many of their teachers are scared to join them. Uh, You're not going to have big indoor seminars with 200 students standing there listening to a lecture uh, indoors. It's It's just not going to happen. Our campus, uh, my son goes to Augustana College, and uh, that's in Rock Island, Illinois. And they're mm-hmm. going to do a kind of hybrid where the large lecture classes are done online from your dorm. And uh, the uh, smaller classes will be done, hopefully, with windows open and masks on. Uh, they have mm-hmm. opened up a respiratory clinic on campus to do mm-hmm. temperature checks and uh, respiratory checks and make sure people are being safe. Uh, Masks will be required on campus. Um, And that area of the country has done well in terms of keeping the caseload down, the the number of positive tests and testing. So uh, fingers crossed he'll be going back to school. But uh, his concern is they may send us back to school and one outbreak in one dorm and we're turned right around again and have to go home. And that's a schlep. It's, It's paying rent. It's He lives off campus. Seniors are required to live off campus. And so, uh, you know, he has to pay rent on an apartment. It's not just like dormitory time where the campus can refund your money. Um, The landlord expects to be paid, et cetera. So uh, it's going to be a challenge for campuses around the country. That's for sure. And and the thing that is maddening is that, you know, there is no um, vaccine. Yeah, but right. there are ways to stomp this thing down, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they involve massive amounts of testing and wearing masks and making masks mandatory in public everywhere, and mandating social distancing and doing a bunch of things that nobody wants to do. Every other country, every other civilized country, is doing those things and is seeing results. We are not, and it it is again. If this were a meteor heading for earth and there was nothing to be done about it. Well, you know, that's, that's the problem, but this is a, this is something over which we can exercise some control, but we're not doing it because the people running the government, the Republican party doesn't give a shit about dead Americans. They just don't care. They care about winning elections mm-hmm. and they, they, and were they care so about desperate. the stock market. Yeah. That's all they care. Yes. And they were so desperate because Donald Trump has one thing that people are still stupid enough to give him credit for. And that's the economy. So they were so desperate to reopen everything, get the stock market back up, because that's the only way this son of a bitch is winning elections. And they were willing to kill hundreds of thousands of Americans to to give him a shot at re-election. By doing, we sat in our home for months, you and I and everyone else we know did, to give the government the chance to get its shit together and deliver a public policy that would save lives. And they blew it. They blew that entire thing. They blew it on conspiracies. They blew it on protests. They blew it on bullshit, uh, 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 racism. They blew it on masks don't work. Um, everything's fine. It's going to be a miracle. It's going to disappear in 15 days. There's 15 people. It'll be down to one. They, they, the Republican Party has committed the worst public health catastrophe in American history, and it's ongoing. And the fact that these people have been dragged out of office by their fucking hair and put on trial is a testament to Bill Barr and Mitch McConnell. And that's it. The, and those and the we two haven't spent clowns. one minute on this podcast talking about uh, the bounty gate. No. Well, talk for a minute about it. Well, I mean, it's treason. It's, it's outright treason. fucking treason. It's, it's the, the reports and the evidence is that 
Vladimir Putin put a bounty on the heads of U.S. Marines in Afghanistan. Paid the Taliban. Paid the Taliban. Pa- paid paid civilians within yeah. Afghanistan to kill soldiers uh-huh. and paid them money. And that Trump was briefed about this months ago. And and he has trained his staff never mention Russia. You just upset right. me by mentioning right. Russia. So just don't do it. So first it was a hoax, and then I wasn't told. It's the it's the excuse that every four year old gives you when you mm-hmm. walk in and see them with a hammer next to your vase, and everything's broken. Mm-hmm. It wasn't me. This never happened. It was Jimmy did it. I wasn't there. It was an accident. And that is the cycle that Donald Trump goes through every time he is caught betraying the United States, yeah. which is every fucking week. Yeah. And the people who are responsible for him still being in office are the 60 million Republican assholes who voted him in and the Republican senators who keep him in. They're the ones who are responsible. They're the ones who need to pay for the rest of their fucking lives for doing this to us. Well, and like the COVID deaths, there are mothers of U.S. Marines who have standing in court to do mm-hmm. discovery and find this shit out. And when it comes out and it will come out, it's going to be devastating. I hope heads will roll. I don't mean to wish death on anybody, but political no. heads need to roll for this. And I'm sorry, we have to skip all this stuff about Pritzker. Okay. Let's just say fine. there's this asshole judge, <laughs> judge and asshole state representative who's a Republican who are like gnats in the ointment uh, mm-hmm. for J.B. Pritzker to try to say he doesn't have standing to run the state during a pandemic. And to, right. and to declare uh, things shut down and to declare masks and et cetera, et cetera, that they are saying he doesn't have authority. And mm-hmm. uh, he's, they've got judges that are saying, oh, yeah, that's right. He doesn't have authority. And then there's federal judges say, oh, yes, he does have authority. And it's going through the courts and we'll see how it goes. But uh, I think Pritzker's done a good job. And I think the people of Illinois have done a good job. Of, uh, yeah, I agree. Overall I think the evidence speaks for itself. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and I think that we're still seeing you know bars being shut down because mm-hmm. they were opened and they had a big crowd and now they're like oh we had three employees who were sick and now we're closing everything down and contact tracing everybody who was there it's like I don't know how much simpler you can make it for people mm-hmm. Doctor Fauci <laughs> says it, bars bars not a good idea not a good worst idea. environment possible it's loud you're yelling people are crowded together and you're spraying. You know, saliva, saliva everywhere. everywhere and breathing in a space. vapor out into a closed space. This is there's there's no worse environment other than, you know, being a human sneeze guard yeah. in a covid ward for getting this stuff than an enclosed bar. And that's where I, I never understood it myself, but that's where lots of people want to go. Yeah. So each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week we're bringing back Vader. Vader belongs to Bloggenfreude at Stink, the blog Stink. He's an old friend of the pod, a friend of uh, mine from way back in way back land, back in... An advisor on automotive issues, Oh, too. my gosh. He's, an, he's mm-hmm. a gearhead, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And uh, Vader was an internet kitty many moons ago as a little kitten, and uh, now he's a big cat, and he is guarding the computer mouse in this picture because, you know, it's a mouse, and he wants you to know I have it right here. Yes, uh, that's his job. Vader Eats Freshly Poured Cat Food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Vader at our Facebook page or website. You can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag save the post office. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. And it's a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution and you can too. See our website proleftpod.com for details. 
both our PayPal and postal address information is there and all the other ways to donate. It's all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media. And thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? A blue gal, every one of the Internet Kitties wishes everyone a safe, mask-wearing, socially distancing 4th of July weekend. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2019-2020, DGBG Productions.